Okay, here we have a Gibson Les Paul, but it's not uh, like uh, any Gibson Les Paul you're likely to have uh, come across uh, in one of the mill guitar shops. This is a, a BFG, which essentially is an unfinished uh, Gibson Les Paul. Uh, that is strange enough in itself. Uh, this one is actually also a Gary Moore endorsed signature uh, BFG Les Paul. Um, let's take it from uh, from the top as always. Uh, sealed uh, crown tuners at the top, uh, and it's here that you start to see the uh, difference between uh, a BFG Les Paul and uh, something that's come out of the, the production. Uh, line uh, for the standard Les Pauls. Um, it's not distressed as such, but it's uh, it's unfinished. Uh, the the front of the uh, headstock is is finished in black, and um, the uh, logo and the model name uh, are uh, quite scuffed up, difficult to read. Uh, the Trust rod cover actually has Gary Moore's signature on there, and uh, that's uh, that's probably a brand new thing. It's uh, it's not been aged in any way. Uh, the neck is mahogany, uh, traditionally mahogany on Les Paul, but it's been treated to uh, one level of finish, and then roughly sanded. So there is still a little bit of friction and roughness on that uh, on that neck. It's also a 50s profile. Uh, which is uh, uh, quite chunky and that relates back to the Gary Moore endorsement uh, he's uh, famous for playing Les Pauls of, of that particular vintage late 50s uh, the feel is okay it's not you know it's not like you're going to get splinters from this thing it's just a little element of roughness and once you own the thing if you don't like that sand it down it's not as if you're going to spoil the finish of a, of a guitar of this nature the rosewood fretboard very attractive stripy almost zebra like grain on that there are no uh, fret markers which goes with the um, territory of the unfinished guitar although there are the white uh, dot markers down this side of the, the neck so as a player you will be able to suss out where you are let's come to the body which uh, is a mahogany body with a maple top. Now you can maybe just see the thickness of the maple there along the edge is about four mils, three mils. Uh, and it's thicker in the middle and it's been carved out to that thickness at the end. Now this finish which looks, I'm talking about the texture rather than the colour, the finish that looks like a, um, almost like a snake skin, that's actually the marks left by the carver's chisel as he's taking away the, the top. Uh, it's left unsanded and then it's been given what I believe is called a lemon burst uh, which is a uh, which is a feature of one of at least one of Gary Moore's original 50s uh, Les Pauls uh, let's head quickly on to the controls and the pickups and the bridge now the pickups as you can see this is a uh, doesn't have a housing it's an open coil uh, it's actually a burst bucket three, which is an extraordinarily nice pickup, and that's teamed up here with a P90, which is an interesting combination. Uh, there's a volume control here for the uh, bridge pickup, here for the P90, and that's a different style of knob, which kind of uh, cocks a snoot at, uh, at people who have posh les pulls. And this is the uh, the master tone control. Uh, back here we have the pickup selector, uh, an unusual place for a pickup selector on a Les Paul. It's three way. Uh, and you'll immediately ask what this is if it's not a pickup selector. This is actually a kill switch. So hitting it down uh, will mute the guitar. So get used to that pretty quickly because if you're halfway through uh, a masterpiece solo and you accidentally nudge that, then, then you're lost. Okay, let's look at the uh, the rear of the guitar. No contouring at all. It's, it's uh, extremely uh, sparse level of finishing. Um, the electrics are actually covered by transparent perspex. 
And I think this is to give the impression that there is no uh, cover on these things. You know, it's a, gosh, my guitar is so old I've even lost the covers. But obviously to sell a guitar with this uh, much access to the electrics would obviously cause damage. So they've, uh, they've got look by using uh, bus specs. So you can see the electrics, but uh, you can't get at them unless you've got a screwdriver. All right, I think that covers it. Apart from one feature that you won't be able to see, uh, this Les Paul is actually a lot lighter than most. And that's because before they put the maple top onto the mahogany body, uh, they've routed out some chambers. I'm not privy to where these chambers are, uh, but uh, they've been done scientifically with a, with a view to how it affects the sound as much as anything else. And I'm told it sounds slightly louder acoustically than a, a, a solid uh, Les Paul would and it adds a touch of air to the to the actual tone uh, produced by the pickups. I'm sure there's a little bit of space, more space in that sound. So speaking of the sound, let's go and have a, a, a listen to this. Okay, I'm going to start with the with the neck pickup, the, the P90. Um, a nice bluesy <laughs> Turning to the, uh, the humbucker, um, as I said, burst bucker, Gibson, probably Gibson's nicest pickups, actually, the burst bucker series, one, two, and three. This is a three, which I believe, uh, last time I looked, is the kind of top of the range, uh, most powerful one. So let's have a little listen to that. <laughs> sound, classic rock, you can probably take the thing into into heavy metal if you, if you really want to do that. The, uh, the possibilities with the burst buck are endless, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a really uh, um, a beautiful pickup. Now, why would you buy a, a, a Les Paul if it's unfinished? Well, it's a question you'll have to answer yourself. Uh, all I can tell you is that it plays beautifully, it sounds beautiful, it looks great even though it's uh, produced to look a little bit rough around the edges. And it's almost like an anti-fashion thing. Um, it's up to you. I would recommend it. It's not everybody is going to have one. It's got character style and it's an American made Les Paul. It's endorsed by Gary Moore, and you don't get much better than that. And it's got the versatility of those two separate voices, one from the blues end of the spectrum, one from the rock and metal end of the spectrum. You wouldn't want another guitar once you've got this. <laughs> 